Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming to this uh, visual mass of the resurrection of our Lord. So we are going to begin now. Uh, just uh, pay attention. Make sure that uh, you don't sleep, okay? <laughs> I will give you a coffee if you need it. Good evening. This is a night of keeping vigil for the Lord. As we begin this vigil, the priest is lighting and blessing the fire in this metal bowl called the brazier. From the brazier comes a new and blessed fire that lights the paschal candle, which will be carried in procession into the dark church. This new fire serves as an image of the resurrection. Dear sisters and brothers, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Sanamti in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. O oh God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure, we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. This preparation of the Paschal candle is one of the most sacred and enduring elements in Christianity. Made of beeswax to represent the purity of Christ, the candle's wick signifies Christ's humanity and the flame of his divine nature. It is adorned with one or more Christian symbols, often the cross to represent his redemptive sacrifice. The first and last letters of the Greek alphabet, Alpha and Omega, to signify that he is the beginning and the end, and the symbols of wheat and grapes, or a chalice and host for the Eucharist, the true presence of Christ and our spiritual strength. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all times, all time belongs to him, and all the ages. To him be glory and power forever. Amen. This Easter candle represents Christ himself, which will be placed on a special Paschal candle stand next to the ambo during the 50 days of Easter. Father Simone will, has been tracing a cross on the Paschal candle with the Greek letter Alpha above the cross and the letter Omega below the cross, and four numerals of the current year between the arms of the cross. Five grains of incense are inserted by the priest into the candle in the form of a cross to recall the aromatic spices that were used to prepare Christ's body for the tomb, and the wounds in his hands, feet, and side, which remained after his resurrection. By his holy and the glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us 
and protect us. Amen. Amen. Father will now light the Paschal candle from the new fire. When the Paschal candle has been lit, the deacon takes the burning coals from the new fire and places them in the thurible. The priest then puts incense into the thurible on top of the burning coals. Our procession now forms as the deacon takes the paschal candle on the way to the sanctuary. The priests, deacons, and servers have lit their candles from the paschal candle and will pass this light on to the congregation. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. As the vigil continues, you will hear the Easter proclamation, the Exulta, as we praise and thank God for what this light represents, God's saving activity through human history. Another of the unique aspects of the Easter vigil is the recounting of the outstanding deeds of the history of salvation. These deeds are related in seven readings from the Old Testament, chosen from the Law and the Prophets, and two readings from the New Testament, namely from the Apostles and from the Gospel.
the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Exalt, let them exalt the host. Let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, Standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, invoke with me, I ask of you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just 
with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feast of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorpost of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to the hope to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonders of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, Worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is the night for me and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this, your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. 
a flame into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light, for it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. Oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these, the last days, has sent us his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this Paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Now, please extinguish your candles. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw how good the light was. Then God separated the light from the darkness. He called the light day and the darkness he called night. Thus, evening came and morning followed the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome and it separated the water from the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and the morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth 
and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days, and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night, and he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. He created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth and all the array were completed, since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord.
Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are great indeed. You are clothed with majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You fix the earth upon its foundation, not to be moved forever. With the ocean, as with a garment, you covered it. Above the mountains the water stood. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You send forth springs into the water courses that wind among the mountains. Beside them the birds of heaven dwell. From among the branches they send forth their song. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You water the mountains from your palace. The earth is replete with the fruit of your works. You raise grass for the cattle and vegetation for man's use, producing bread from the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have wrought them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Please stand. Let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created human nature and still more wonderfully redeemed it, grant us, we pray, to set our minds against the enticements of sin that we may merit to attain eternal joys. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, 
and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, Both of you stay here with the donkey, while the boy and I go on over yonder. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Thereupon Abraham took the wood for the holocaust and laid it out on his son Isaac's shoulder, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hands on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I now know how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went up and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yireh. Hence, people now say, on the mountain, the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding me, your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessings. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You are my inheritance, O Lord. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup. You it is who hold fast my lot. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. You are my
Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Please stand. Let us pray. O oh God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increase the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery Make your servant Abraham, father of nations, as once you saw. Grant, we pray, that your peoples may enter worldly into the grace to which you call them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you, lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed, without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, And the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit, 
All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic. And he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus, the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant, Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot, he is cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. He is my God, I praise him. The God of my Father, I extol him. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. The Lord is the warrior. Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army he hurled into the sea. The elites of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in the glory. The flood waters covered them. 
They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O oh Lord, magnificent in power. Your right hand, O oh Lord, has shattered the enemy. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. You brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seat, O Lord, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the light of the New Testament have unlocked the meaning of wonders worked in former times so that the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font and the nation delivered from slavery foreshadows the Christian people, grant we pray that all nations obtaining the privilege of Israel by merit of faith may be reborn by partaking of your spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit. A wife married in youth and then cast off says your God. For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with great tenderness I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath, for a moment, I hid my face from you. But with enduring love I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord who has mercy on you. O afflicted one, storm-battered and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelians and your foundations in sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of carbuncles, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In justice shall you be established, far from the fear of oppression where destruction cannot come near you. 
the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledged to the patriarchs by reason of their faith and through sacred adoption increase the children of your promise so that what the saints of all the never doubted would come to pass, your church may now see in great part fulfilled. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come 
receive grain and eat. Come, without pain and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. But my word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Sing praise to the Lord for 
for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Please stand and let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increased the longing of your people for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the neverworld? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Had you walked in the way of God, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding, that you may know also where are length of days and life, where light of the eyes and peace. Who has found the place of wisdom? Who has entered into her treasuries? The one who knows all things knows her. He has probed her by his knowledge, the one who established the earth for all time and filled it with four-footed beasts. He was he who dismisses the light and it departs calls it, and it obeys him, trembling. Before whom the stars at their posts shine and rejoice. When he calls them, they answer, Here we are, shining with joy for their maker. Such is our God. No other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant, to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God, the law that endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light toward splendor. Give not your glory to another, your, pri your privileges to an alien race. 
Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. The word of the Lord. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect. Refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you Precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold. Sweeter also than syrup, or honey from the comb. Lord, you have the Please stand, let us pray. O oh God, who constantly increase your church by your call to the nations, graciously grant to those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore I poured out my fury upon them, 
because the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my Thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you. I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God. Amid loud cries of joy and thanksgiving, with the multitude keeping festival, like a deer that longs for running Send forth your light and your fire. 
fidelity, they shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. Like a deer that longs for running stream, my soul longs for you, my God. Then will I go into the altar of the Lord, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. Like a deer that longs for running Please stand and let us pray. O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation which you planned from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what had become world is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Oh, please remain standing, sorry.
let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, store up in your church a spirit of adoption so that, renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, brothers, and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified in him so that our sinful body might be done away with that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, Who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, He is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Now I can see you. Have light. Story of creation. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here tonight. We appreciate that you came joining other or your fellow Catholics to conclude the three day liturgical celebration of Easter Tridium. So tonight, tonight is a special night. Not like any other nights. The exalted has told us that this is the night, the night of liberation, the night of freedom, the night of resurrection. the night of freedom. In most churches tonight, the number of readings proclaimed is higher than usual, right? You had that experience. Yes, seven from the Old Testament and two from the New Testament. And if you add the responsible sounds, wow, this is the night. The night we can just sit there and relax and just let the word of God navigate us through the river of salvation. The story 
we heard tonight is the story of our salvation told in details. It is the mystery of God's love unfolding before our eyes. And we need to be reminded year after year after year after year. Why? Because we too are part of the story. We are part of that story, the story of a God who loves us. We belong to such a God, a God of life, God of Jesus, God of the resurrection. Not just us, not just us, but also others. Because you are not the only ones, and we will not be the last ones. Tonight, by the way, we will witness a group of our brothers and sisters who are joining us on this journey of faith. And we thank God for them. We thank God who has brought them to us so that they may join this community of faith through the sacraments and walk with us as we are now heading toward God. God does not any, want anyone to sit on the sidelines, but God wants everyone to plunge into the river of salvation, salvation history, and experience his merciful love. So tonight, we have those, as I said, of our brothers and sisters who are going to join us as we are now making this march toward God. Natalie, Paul, Sierra, Zaire, Asri, Ariel, Reese, Lane, Scarlett, Eileen, Amanda, Carla, Heather, Jeffrey, Jordan, Mark, Matthew, Melissa, Shannon, Sherry, William, Miguel. Did I forget anyone? So thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your decision. Your decision to come and to be of our members. So tonight, let me tell you, you start a new life. A new life in Christ. You become disciples of Christ, part of his Christian family. Jesus' life, new life, life of the resurrection. Jesus' life becomes your life. And as St. Paul says today, if you grow in union with Christ through a death like his, you shall also be united with him in his resurrection. And St. Paul goes on to say, Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. Tonight, these waters will wipe away your old life, your old self, so that now you may receive the grace of being adopted children of God. So I encourage you to strive to live as Easter people, people of light, the one that guided us through the darkness to this place, the light that represents Christ Jesus. Let that light inflame your hearts to follow Christ more faithfully. Because we are 
now behind him as he guides us along the way. Second encouragement is that uh, we Catholics, our vocation is to evangelize, sharing the good news of the risen Christ. And if you reflect, you think, and you step back and think about how blessed you are, think about tonight, how blessed you are, and how incredible is the gift of faith you receive from Christ, you will want to share it with others. So you have a God who died and rose for you, and you have an intimate relationship with him and an intimate way of receiving him every day in the sacrament of the Holy Communion. Then you can become an Easter people and every moment of your life will become a moment of evangelization. So as you join us, keep that in mind that you have, you are going to receive not just the sacrament, the grace of being saved, but also a responsibility. You will be receiving a mission, the mission to evangelize. How did you come to us? I know that some people led you here, and then you can be also people who will lead others to the church. Like Mary Magdalene and other women were told by the angel to go and tell the disciples the good news of Jesus' resurrection, so does he tell you today to go to your own Galilee and then talk to your people and tell them the good news. You will find Christ there in your day-to-day -day life, your homes, your place of work, where you shop, where you socialize, where you worship, like now here. Have eyes of faith. You receive these eyes of faith tonight, and then you will recognize Christ, whatever you will be. So we give him thanks for bringing you to the font of regeneration. Washed clean, go and praise God, and then be with us on the mission of evangel evangelization. Now that time is here. The one you were waiting for, right? Okay. Will those to be baptized please come forward with your sponsor? My dearly beloved brothers and sisters, with one heart and one soul, let us, by our prayers, come to the aid of these, our brothers and sisters, in their blessed hope, so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help. So at this time, we invite you to stand for the litany of saints. Lord. 
Lord, hear 
your death and resurrection. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Bring these chosen ones to new birth through the grace of baptism. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. May be seated at this time. Almighty, ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism so that what is to be carried out by our, our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we will bless the waters of this font. O oh God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through the sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O oh God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O oh God, who by the outpouring of the flood forged shadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O oh God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shore through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O oh God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood. And after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive, received by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son 
so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of the world may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through the water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And so I ask you, those being baptized, the following questions. Loud. Loud. Do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? All right, since you have professed your faith, now time to make a trip to the fount. Zaire, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mouthly, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Sierra, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ariel, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good job. Asri, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Scarlet, I baptize you in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This, this way. Eileen, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Chris, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Paul, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lane. Lane, I baptize you in the name of the Father. <laughs> and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's okay. That's okay. My brothers and sisters, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourselves in Christ. Receive this white baptismal garment and bring it and stain it to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Amen. God, parents, I invite you to come forward and to give to the newly baptized the light of Christ.
newly baptized, receive the light of Christ. You have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as children of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Sponsors, you may now return to your seats. I invite now the newly baptized to pass the same light of Christ they have just received through their baptism to all of you at this time. Everybody, please stand. We are going to renew our promises of baptism. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism 
so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Let us say, Amen. 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 Okay, good. You may now extinguish, oh no, wait. Oh. <laughs> we have to do the sprinkling first, okay. Please remain safe. <laughs> what is the bucket? Now is the right time to extinguish the candles. Would our candidates and sponsors please come forward for the profession of faith? Everyone else may be seated.
My dear candidates of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of church's unity. I My dear candidates, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. Will the newly baptized and their sponsors please come forward? My dear candidate for confirmation, by your baptism you have been born again in Christ and you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and the successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering and death and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. My sisters and brothers, let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on these candidates for confirmation to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, we start the confirmation, the anointing with oil. Who goes first? <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth and sit. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Michael the Archangel. 
be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Teresa of Avila, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Rita of Cassia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your Jan Francis de Chantal, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Teresa of Avila, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. My cordial angel, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Maria Madonna del Gisalo. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Isidore, the farmer and laborer, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Mary Magdalene. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Monica, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Josephine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Peter, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. With your Teresa, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Sebastian, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Francis of Assisi, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Hubertus, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. It's a great joy to have uh, God's people joining us. So uh, I would like to invite you, my sisters and brothers, to join me in welcoming our new newest members 
of our parish community. back to your pews. Full Catholics, eh? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Please rise. That's our Catholic Church. Please kneel, please sit, please stand. That's us. The way we worship. God loves it. So now, sisters and brothers, in the fullness of Easter joy, let us bring our needs and hopes to the God of life. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Aquila, Bishop Rodriguez, our priests, deacons, and religious, may they boldly proclaim the resurrection of Christ and the good news of salvation to all peoples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that the power of Christ crucified may lead lands torn apart by violence and war to make a commitment to justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family on this Easter, may we experience the risen Christ in our lives and seek a closer relationship with Christ beginning today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those entering the church on this holy night, may God and the prayers of this community strengthen them on their journey of faith we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions of this Mass, for the intentions of our RCIA catechumens and candidates, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, receive the prayers of your church, celebrating the glorious victory of your risen Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
And I pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands. The grace and glory of his name. For our good and good of all the Holy Church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yes, it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to loud you more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your praise and glory as we acclaim. Indeed, the Holy O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and the blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries for on the night he was betrayed he took himself bread and giving you thanks he said that the blessing brought the, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our Father, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Samuel, our Archbishop, Jorge, our Axillary Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Happy Easter. 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 Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Happy Easter. Peace be with you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. I only say the word and my soul shall.
Please join in singing number 411 in the Red Autoramos books, At the Lamb's High Feast, number 411.
let us say, our Eucharistic revival prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you give us your flesh and blood for the life of the world, and you desire that all people come to the supper of the sacrifice of the Lamb. Renew your new church, beauty and the goodness contained in the most blessed Eucharist. Jesus, living in the Eucharist, come and live in me. Jesus, healing in the Eucharist, Come and heal me. Jesus, sacrificing yourself in the Eucharist, come and suffer in me. Jesus, rising in the Eucharist, come and rise in your life in me. Jesus, loving in the Eucharist, come and love in me. Lord Jesus Christ, through the gospel mystery of your death and resurrection, made present in every holy night, for our union of our church and our world. Grant us all during this time of Eucharistic revival, your Holy Spirit may draw all people to join us at this banquet of life. You live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, our Lady of Guadalupe, Mother of the Eucharist, pray for us. Let us pray. O out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal sacrament one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. We would like to thank all those uh, who were involved in making this vigil mass a beautiful experience for our new Catholics. And to our new Catholics, we continue to thank you for your decision to join us. We just prayed, you know, this prayer of uh, Eucharistic revival. We ask the Lord to help all those who are still away from the Eucharist to come to the banquet that he has prepared. He's preparing every day here. So it begins with you. When you come, you get strength, and then you go, you do, what I told you in my preaching, you go and carry out the mission of Christ or bringing others to Christ. We'd like to see many people join, uh, join the church next year through your work, okay? So let's get to work. Mm -hmm. Don't sleep. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. 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 And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. 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 Before I give the last blessing, so I know that there is something happening downstairs. Go and check out.
Do you know what it is? The Hallelujah celebration. So, don't miss that. Good stuff. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. that uh, I didn't talk to you or talk about you. Good job over there in the sky. <laughs> and I don't want to start naming people. I know people have done a great job. The, the formation team, uh, ICIA, Religious Education, Youth Ministry, you know, Adult Formation, all of you, you have brought these people to church, to our Catholic faith. So we are proud of the work you are doing. Everyone in the liturgy, standing for different duties, I can't name you. You know who you are. Thank you so much for everything, okay? And uh, thank you, all of you, for coming to church, for making St. Joseph what it is. God bless you. Our service, I didn't forget you. <laughs> Our closing song is number 410 in the Red Otteramus books. Jesus Christ is risen today. Number 410. <laughs>
There is food and drink downstairs. Food and drink downstairs. <laughs>